before you start lesson three you should complete test A in your test masters if you didn't get a hundred on it already you need to do it again until you get a hundred those multiplication facts you don't want to waste time having to remember how to do each one of those you need to just commit those to memory and the sooner you do that the easier it'll be for you to do your math later on in this book well this lesson is about missing numbers in arithmetic and so we'll be covering addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and trying to solve problems where we don't know what one of the numbers is in that particular problem. Let's just learn how to do these problems by doing some practice problems. Now remember, my practice problems are different than the ones in the book, but they are a very similar idea. So if you need more help, you can do the practice problems that are in the book as well as mine. Remember also you should be writing down everything I write down. So look at this practice problem A. We're trying to see what A equals. So ask yourself what plus 15 equals 44. That's how you should do these problems. What plus 15 equals 44. Now one way to do these problems is just kind of do them in your head. You can say well 20 plus 15 that would be 35. 30 plus 15 that would be 45. So it must be 29 is the answer. However, some of these are going to be a little more complicated than this, and you won't be able to just do them in your head. So let's look at a process that we can use to solve any kind of missing number problem. Remember what undoes addition? It's subtraction. That's an inverse operation. So what you can do here is take the sum, 44, minus 15. That should equal that add end, A. 44 minus 15 will equal A, except we need to remove A for right now and just solve this problem. And what we would do is borrow from this 4 in the tens place. So we need a 3 up there. 14 minus 5 is 9. 3 minus 1 is 2, just like we had said when we did it in our head. 29 is the answer. So to solve that problem, we use subtraction because subtraction undoes addition. Think of your fact family problems that we did back in lesson two. If you need to review those practice problems, you might want to now because we'll be using the inverse operations to help us solve these missing number problems. Look at practice problem B. Let's solve that one for B. Find that missing number. Well, we know that subtraction undoes addition, so we just need to say if 63 plus B equals 90, then 90 minus 63 has to equal B, and so we'll just do that problem there. We need to borrow a 1. 10 minus 3 is 7. 8 minus 6 is 2. 27 is the answer. You can always check your work on these problems too, just to make sure. 63 plus 27, does that equal 90? Well, 3 plus 7 is 10, so you bring a 0 down there, put a 1 up here. 6 plus 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 90. We get back to the sum that we had originally. So yes, we did that problem correctly. Look at practice problem C. Let's work on some missing number subtraction problems now. Here we have a missing menu n. That's the larger number. We don't know what that larger number is. That's one thing to keep in mind in a subtraction problem is that menu n, that's the biggest number that you'll see in the problem. So you've got to have a number that's bigger than 12 and bigger than 31. Think about what undoes subtraction. That would be addition. And so you can say 12 plus 31. That would equal C. And so you do 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. C is equal to 43. Check your work. Does that make sense? Does 43 minus 31 equal 12? You can probably just do that in your head and see that, yes, that is true. So C is 43. Look at D. This time you have a missing subtrahend. Now we just said that addition or subtraction can undo addition. And addition can undo subtraction. But we cannot get D by doing 87 plus 45 in this problem. 
87 plus 45, that would be the largest number that we would get. It would be larger than 87 or 45, and we know the subtrahend has to be smaller than 87. So be careful on a problem like this. On missing number addition problems, you can always assume that subtraction will undo the addition. And you can always use subtraction to find your answer. When you're doing subtraction problems, though, you cannot always do addition to find your answer. Only if you have a missing menu end or missing largest number. If that's missing, you can do addition to solve your problem with the two numbers that you have. On a problem like this, when you have a missing subtrahend, you have to do subtraction again. 87 minus 45. That will give you what that missing number is. So 7 minus 5 is 2. 8 minus 4 is 4. 42 is what D is equal to. You can check your work. Just think about that. 42 plus 45 equals 87. Or you could also just think 87 minus 42 equals 45. So 42 is the missing number in practice problem D. Look at practice problem E. Let's do some missing number multiplication problems now. 6 times what equals 24? Well, you should be able to just do that off the top of your head. 6 times 4 equals 24, so E is 24. That's the missing number there. But let's find a process that will work for any kind of missing number multiplication problem, just like we did when we were doing the addition missing number problem. On this one, remember that division undoes multiplication. So we could say 24 divided by 6. 6 goes into 24 four times and exactly four times. So that answer is 4. Division undoes multiplication. And we can use that anytime we have a missing factor in a multiplication problem. Look at problem F. What times 19 equals 1330? It's always how you can think about that missing part. Instead of saying F times 19 equals 1330, you think to yourself, what times 19 equals 1330? You have to remember that division undoes multiplication. So you can say 1330 divided by 19 or 1330 as the dividend, 19 is the divisor. 19 goes into 13. It won't go into that. It'll go into 133 exactly seven times. And so that would equal a 133 down here. Subtract, you get zero. Bring down a zero. 19 goes into zero, zero times. And so your answer is 70. 70 times 19 equals 1330. You can always check your work on a problem like that to make sure you did it right. And we'll do 9 times 7. That's equal to 63. Bring the 6 up here. 6, well, 7 times 1 is 7, plus 6 is 13. And then bring your 0 down, 1330 is the result there. So we know that we did that problem right and that 70 is the answer. And we could even put, we haven't been doing this, but you can always show that your variable that you were trying to find, that unknown value, equaled 70. You can write the letter F equals 70. Now, let me show you something. This is the same problem for both E and F. You might see a problem like this where it's 6E equals 24 or 19F equals 1330. When there's no multiplication symbol there, it's just 6 and then a letter 6e, that means times. 6 times e equals 24, or 19 times f is equal to 1330. That's another way that you might see a multiplication problem written. You solve them the same way, but just so you know, you might see a multiplication problem written like that. And so if you see 6e, you'll know that that really means 6 times e. Let's do a missing number division problem now. Practice problem G. We have 215 divided by G equals 15. 
Now multiplication problems, you can always use division to find your missing number. In a division problem, sometimes you have to use division, sometimes you have to use multiplication to find your missing value. It's kind of like subtraction. Sometimes you have to do addition, sometimes you have to do a subtraction. Depends on if you have a missing minuend or subtrahend. In division, it depends if you have a missing dividend or a divisor. Here we have a missing divisor. So what we need to do to figure out what that missing divisor is, is do division. We need to do 215 over 5. That will equal G. Because then we can just say, well, G times 5 should equal the dividend 215 from the original problem. Let's just do long division here. 5 goes into 2, doesn't go into that. 5 goes into 21 four times. And so we put a 20 here. Subtract, bring down a 1, bring down the 5 there. 5 goes into 15 exactly three times. And so there's G, 43. We can check our work. 43 times 5 should equal 215. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry a 1 up here. 4 times 5 is 20 plus 1 is 21. So 43, say 43 equals G. That is the correct answer. Look at practice problem H. This time we have a missing dividend. To solve this problem, we can use multiplication. So when you have a missing dividend, do multiplication. Just think about it. The dividend is the biggest number. 22 divided by 6 would give us a small number. And there's no way that would get us back to 22. So you just have to look at the problem and kind of think about, well, what am I dealing with here? I'm dealing with the number that should be the largest number, so I must have to do multiplication. That's one way to kind of help you remember if you're supposed to be doing multiplication or division. Just kind of look at the number. What do you think it should be? Should it be the biggest number that you're looking at, or is it going to be one of the smaller numbers? And here we need to do multiplication. So let's just do 22 times 6 over to the side. 6 times 2 is 12. Carry 1. We have 12 again, plus 1 is 132. And so that's what H should equal. We can always do division to check that out. 132 divided by 6, or just write it with our division box. 6 goes into 13 two times. Do our subtraction. Get 1, bring down a 2. 6 goes into 12 exactly two times. So we get back to the quotient from the original problem. So that is correct. H equals 132. Now I've got one more problem down there on the bottom. Practice problem I. Let's just think about that real quick. How would we solve that one? It's got all these add-ends on the left side. What you should do is simplify all of those first. Remember that commutative property for addition Order does not matter. So we could put the I first and then have plus 2 plus 7, which we can just say is 9, plus 19 equals 40. Add the 9 and the 19 together and we'd get 28. So we'd say I plus 28 is equal to 40. Now remember, we always do subtraction when we have a missing number addition problem. That will undo the addition and get us our answer. Or like a problem like this, it's fairly simple. We can just do it in our head too. 12 plus 28 should equal 40. And so we can just say I is equal to 12. That would be our missing number. So if you come across a problem like that where there's a missing number that you need to solve for, usually there'll be addition problems that they'll have you work. Remember your commutative property and just add up all the numbers that you can and that will simplify it down to a missing addend and then a known addend and then your sum. Three different parts and then you can solve for that missing addend. 
Okay, now in this lesson, in the back of your book, there's some extra practice if you need to do that. And, of course, you can always do the practice problems in the book. If you need some more help even past that, do the supplemental exercise in the appendix. Okay, well, that's all for lesson three.